Today's primetime local news. Road closures and construction could cause major traffic delays for up to four weeks in the border city. A sold-out Oscar-themed fundraiser to raise more than $2 million for CT scan in Wainwright. And a local author releases her latest book, a collection of humorous stories inspired by her life story. Plus, the perfect gift for your Valentine's. We check out a few things for the last-minute shopper. Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Road closures could disrupt traffic come Monday morning. Lloydminster residents have a week to prepare for another road closure coming to the intersection of 40th Avenue and 36th Street. Starting Monday, the spot will be closed for a minimum of four weeks if weather conditions hold out. The closure is to repair the existing culvert on the intersection, which is part of the city's east drainage we channel. To replace it with upsized culverts to improve capacity and uh, flow underneath that connection. Without the work blockage during a major flooding situation presents a hazard for that area. In our larger rainfall events uh, in the last couple of years, we have noticed some surcharging or backing up of that channel because we cannot get the water through that crossing uh, quick enough and away from residents. The intersection will briefly close again in the spring to make road repairs that cannot be done at these temperatures. Well, the Wainwright Health Foundation and its yearly gala Saturday night had uh, to raise funds for their local hospital. Every year they hold the Heart Strings and Roses Gala. But this year they decided to switch things up and have a night at the Oscars. Our Shelby Clark has more. This glamorous event had people coming from all over to step onto the red carpet and help raise funds for the Wainwright Health Center. Every year they choose an item to raise towards for the hospital and this year it's a CT scanner. Tonight we're, we're hoping to raise like $100,000 here from this event and we've got a three-year project with a health center and Alberta Health Services to raise money for CT scanner valued at $2.2 million. Food, champagne and auctions were on the venue for the night and the event had a great turnout. So far, people have raised over $700,000 on this project and physicians at the Wayne Wright Hospital believe a CT scanner is an essential item to have. We do, we are a stroke center, we do have the head scanner, but in, we send over 3,000 uh, people to Camrose every year for, for full body scanners and it would be so wonderful if we could do it here. Overall, it's about a four million dollar project and the government of Alberta is putting in a couple million with the rest being raised by these events. The mayor thinks this event is not only important for Wainwright, but also important for the surrounding area. There's so much waiting list and there's so many people leaving town. Right now I can tell you two weeks ago I was, my doctor said I needed a CT scan and he got me an appointment for the third week of July. So uh, I hope I'm still here then. <laughs> right now, patients usually have a six month wait and have to go to other places like Calgary or Edmonton for a CT scan. The gala showed how the Wainwright community continues to be very supportive and come together when they need to. The businesses that are here, even though there's a bit of a downturn in, in, our, in our energy sectors, um, you, you know, you look around at the crowd tonight, you, you never know that. So uh, we're really happy and really glad the businesses and all the people came out to, uh, to help out tonight and uh, raise some money for the CT scanner in Wainwright. Shelby Clark, Primetime Local News. Well, with only four days to Valentine's Day, a lot of people might still be trying to figure out what to get. And now is the right time for those last minute shoppers to start looking for a present for that special someone. But choosing the right gift can be hard if you don't know what your par par partner wants. And if jewelry is the direction you're headed, a recent trend for women is a certain color for the jewelry. So nowadays I'm actually finding that girls are loving the rose gold and our celebrate, we actually have our uh, lookbook out which has lots of products in it and sometimes guys might come in with the circled picture in the book like I need this, my girl really likes this one. So the girls are out there giving hints on Pinterest or in Instagram or whatnot, yeah. And if you don't know what to get your special guy, there are a few items you might be interested in getting him. Guys are in love with watches. We actually have at Paris Jewelers here amazing citizen watches. The good thing about them, they actually run on light. So 
they will never be replacing batteries in them. And second thing, guys actually like chains a lot. So gold chains, silver chains. A local columnist is sharing her love of the prairies in a new book. Helen Rowe Toes was at Lloyd Mr. Uh, Mall on Saturday to sign copies of her latest book, Prairie Wool. Toes writes a, a weekly column on the same name at the local paper, and she recently decided to compile stories from the column to create and a book. In my yearbook in high school, I wanted to write. Sadly, I waited a long time, but um, better late than never. So. It means a lot to me because this is my area. I love the prairies. The book is a collection of humorous stories inspired by different aspects of her life. Not every story is about the prairies. They all take place here. But um, I work in a school, so there's humorous things about children. I drive a school bus and other large equipment, believe it or not. And uh, so there's stories about that. You can pick up a copy of Prairie Wool at Cole's Bookstore, Amazon, or MyPrairieWool.com. In this week's retrospect, our Abbey St. John goes back to 2007 to look at two stories. The first is about learning a different type of dance, and the second is on the increase in younger people living in the border city. Back in 2007, a local dancer traded in a more traditional dance for a freer flowing style. It's a sexy Eastern dance, most commonly referred to as belly dancing. Belly dancing is all about being the music. It's, it's the, you know, you're interpreting the music, you're the visual representation of the music. So you want to, you just, you can relax and you can feel and, and after a good, you know, it's just like a good workout or a good run or whatever. You just feel very mellow after and very satisfied. Swanson learned a more traditional style of dance as a child, but decided to try belly dancing about six years ago. I grew up Ukrainian dancing, so it is quite a shock to a lot of my family when I switched over from Ukrainian dancing to belly dancing. It's so different. Ukrainian dancing is all arms and, and posture and feet, and, and belly dancing is you get to relax all that and just and just have fun with it. Also in 2007, the border city was seeing an increase in younger people living in Lloyd. If you've lived in the border city long enough, you may have noticed there seem to be a lot of young faces. Young people attract young people, so uh, certainly from an uh, entertainment and, uh, and just a social fabric perspective, and sports well, plays into that as well, but there's other forms of recreation in, in the community as well. In fact, a new study suggests the average age in Lloydminster is 26. What would you guesstimate is the average age in Lloydminster? Oh, I'm thinking probably 21 to 23. 29, maybe? 32. The average age in Lloydminster, what would you guesstimate it at? Oh, gee, I wouldn't have a clue. I'd say... Uh, mid 20s. 30? 30. 30 something. Okay, it's actually 26. Does yeah. that surprise you at all? No, not too much. I knew it was, you know, early 30s, late 20s. For this week's retrospect, I'm Abby St. John. Retrospect is brought to you by Webb's Machinery. Webb's Machinery, your New Holland dealer in Vermilion, Bakerville, and Lamont. And now I look at your evening weather with our Abbey St. John. Thanks, Judy. Take a look at current temperatures. It is minus 5 here in Lloydminster with winds coming out from the west south west at 24 kilometers per hour, making it feel closer to minus 12 with that wind chill. We did have a nice clear sunny day out today, which was also nice to see. There's a chance that we could see some snowfall early tomorrow morning, uh, about two to four centimeters. Across Alberta, minus four in Cold Lake, minus one in Athabasca and Edson, zero in Edmonton, White Court and Jasper, minus six in Rocky Mountain House and minus five in Red Deer. On the Saskatchewan side, minus four in Meadow Lake and Prince Albert, minus 10 in Saskatoon and minus 8 in Melfort and North Battleford. Overnight in North Battleford, the temperature will drop to minus 9 overnight and that wind will be at 13 kilometers per hour coming in from the southwest and pick up to 17 kilometers per hour tomorrow coming in from the northwest. There's a chance that they could see some snowfall tomorrow early morning. Uh, 
and with the daytime high of minus three in Cold Lake overnight. The temperature will drop to minus seven and that wind will be at nine kilometers per hour coming in from the west southwest and pick up to 19 kilometers per hour tomorrow coming in from the north northwest. They also have a chance to see about two to four centimeters of snowfall to early tomorrow morning with a daytime high of minus four here in Lloydminster overnight. As I said, we could experience about two to four centimeters of snow tomorrow early morning uh, overnight. The temperature will drop to minus seven and that wind will be at 19 kilometers per hour coming in from the west southwest and remain that way tomorrow. However, switching directions to the north northwest with a daytime high of minus two, which will fall closer to minus 29 with that wind chill and a low of minus seven. Then on Wednesday, things get significantly colder with a high of minus 21, which will feel closer to minus 35 and a low of minus 29. On Thursday will be a mix of sun and cloud with a high of minus 10, which will feel closer to minus 20 with that wind chill and a low of minus 26. That is a look at your three day forecast. We'll have more news coming up after the break. Welcome back. The University of Calgary School of Public Policy has announced a creation of a research center that will focus on agricultural development in Western Canada. The Simpson Center for Agriculture and Food Innovation and Public Education is named after Calgary rancher and businessman John Simpson, who donated more than $5 million to the project. The purpose of the center is to contribute to public education and shape policy surrounding Canadian agri-food and agribusiness. Simpson says agriculture faces misconception about its environmental impact and needs to develop positions for its defense. While consumers in New Brunswick should expect to pay more for milk as a result of the closure of the Saputo plant in St. John, the company announced the closure Thursday to take effect a year from now with the loss of about 70 jobs. Paul Gounce, uh, chairman of the Dairy Farmers of New Brunswick, says farmers will have to ship their milk as far as Victoriaville, Quebec or Nova Scotia for processing. Guan says farmers have a year to prepare. There are 176 dairy farmers in New Brunswick. And now here are your agriculture prices for today. part of less than 5% of Canadian auto body shops at Lloydminster's only locations with certified collision care recognition at City Centre Auto Body. The Bobcats have had a tough run since the changing of the decade. In 14 games since the new year began, the Bobcats have just found their second win. The win came Saturday night against the Drayton Valley Thunder. 3-2 was the final, with goals coming from the three assistant captains, Gunny, Gunner Kinningberg, Ty Mosman, and Chance Adrian. The Cats were down two heading into the third, and according to head coach Nigel Dubé, the team underperformed. Well, Saturday I thought we were uh, awful in the, in the second period, and there was no other way to put it. Uh, you, you can't put sugar on top of uh, any of that, and uh, the big part credit to our group that they came out and responded in the third period. Uh, gutsy effort with nine to go, and uh, find three. Uh, Drayton's been really hot of late, and, and to find three late there uh, was a big one. Uh, I thought our compete over the course of the weekend was really good. Uh, the execution was a little bit off and on. But uh, those big guys, we're, we're leaning on some guys here to, to do the big things offensively. And uh, for a guy like Mosey, that was his first one in a while. So um, hopefully that gets him another spark and keeps him going here. While this is only the second win of 2020 for the Bobcats, they've been involved in tight contests. The Cats have lost two games in the shootout, including last Wednesday in Bonneville. There are six games remaining in the Bobcats schedule, with two being at home. If you don't already have plans for you and your sweetheart this Friday for Valentine's Day, the Bobcats have the perfect solution for you. In previous years, the dance was held for ladies to have a fun night out, but the format of the dance has changed. For the third year, the Bobcats will be hosting a Valentine's Day dance for couples. The event is run and put on by the Bobcats team to help fundraise and to give back to the community. 
and I think it's just as a whole uh, more just a true evening out. We call it the Valentine's Day dance, but uh, just an evening to kind of relax and, and, and enjoy each other's company, and this year just so happens to be right on Valentine's Day. This is a chance to see the players off, off of the ice and to have a night out. The dance will be held at the Centennial Civic Centre at 7 p.m. on Friday. There will be a midnight lunch, a silent auction, and the Dirt Rich Band will be performing. And now, a look at your weather with our Abbey St. John. Thanks, Evan. Taking a look at our satellite radar, nothing too major uh, going on. A little bit of snowfall outside of the Edmonton area and uh, close to Vegreville, making its way closer to here. We have a chance that uh, about a 30% chance that we could see some snow, light snowfall uh, early, early tomorrow morning. Uh, about two to four centimeters is predicted to fall. Uh, that goes for up in Cold Lake as well. About a 30% chance of light snowfall. Periods of light snowfall early this uh, tomorrow morning. About about two to four centimeters on the Saskatchewan side. Uh, just a little bit of cloud coverage for most of the region down in North Battleford. Uh, they also have a chance of snow periods of snowfall tomorrow morning, about two centimeters to fall. Uh, currently minus five here in Lloydminster, as well as in St. Walberg, minus four in Maidstone, Meadow Lake and Green Lake, minus three in Macklin and Pearson, minus eight in North Battleford and minus two up in Isle Cross. And on the Alberta side, minus four in Provost, Vegreville, Vermilion, St. Paul, Bonneville, and Cold Lake. Zero in Lacklebish and in Edmonton. And minus five in Wainwright, minus three in Marwain. And tomorrow, minus two here in Lloydminster, as well as in Marwain and St. Paul, and up in Lacklebish. Minus three in Bonneville, minus four in Cold Lake. Zero in Edmonton and Vegreville. Minus one in Vermilion, and plus one in Wainwright and in Provost. And on the Saskatchewan side, zero down in Macklin. Minus two in Maidstone, minus three in North Battleford, St. Walberg, and in Pearsland, minus four in Meadow Lake and Green Lake, and minus eight up in Isle of Cross. Overnight across the region, heavy cloud coverage in the majority of the region uh, with Meadow Lake, Pearsland, Provost, and Murnum sitting at minus seven, minus nine in Isle of Cross, Paradise Hill, and Unity, minus six in Bonneville, and minus eight in Wainwright for your overnight temperatures. Your school day forecast for tomorrow at 8 a.m. It'll be minus three with periods of snow snowfall uh, throughout the morning. About two to four centimeters is predicted to fall. And then at recess time, it'll be around minus two with fairly cloudy skies, which will be the trend for the majority of the day. And then minus two will remain that way until school is out, which will be around minus five and a low of minus seven for tomorrow. On Wednesday, things get significantly colder with a high of minus 21 and a low of minus 29. On Thursday, it'll be a mix of sun and cloud with a high of minus 10 and a low of minus 26. On Friday, a little bit more sun with a high of minus eight and a low of minus 11. To start your weekend off on Saturday, a mix of sun and cloud with a high of minus 13 and a low of minus 20. On Sunday, a fairly sunny day with a high of minus 10 and a low of minus 18. And then back on Monday, a mix of sun and cloud with a high of minus six and a low of minus 16. That is a look at your seven day forecast. We'll have more news coming up after the break. Time again for question of the day, of course. Uh, the Oscars took place Sunday and had a lot of surprises with uh, Parasite taking home four awards, including Best Picture, and performances from Eminem, Billie Eilish, and Janae, uh, Janelle Monet. Of course, the question was, what did you think about the actual Oscars? I really liked it. I thought they should have had a host. Yeah. But that's besides the point. So it was all over the map for me, but I enjoyed watching it, and it was really interesting for me. I did as well. I really liked it. I thought it was fun. Again, I wish there was a host because yeah. some of the intros into the announcers were very jumpy. Yeah. Some of them worked. Yeah. Some of them felt very awkward and yeah. forced. Yeah. But other than that, I loved it. I was shocked when Eminem came out. He, yeah. I, I, I'm a huge Eminem fan. So when he came out, I was like, I was, I stopped everything. <laughs> I dropped everything and I just watched and it was incredible. Wow. He still sounds phenomenal. Lose Yourself is still a great song. Oh. 
So he finally made it to the Oscars after finally, 18 years. Finally, after all of that. It was good to see him. It was a nice, refreshing thing yes. to see him. It was kind of surprising, obviously. Um, uh, Billie Eilish was amazing at her yes. song. Of course, Cynthia Erivo was, oh my oh, gosh. She was, she was phenomenal. Yeah. It gave with me her. Ch chills when yeah. I heard her. When she went on that big high note yeah. at the closer to the end, I, I really, was... Yeah. And I think she's great. She's uh, on Harriet Tubman, obviously, um, as well as Aretha Franklin. She's doing a series with that. That was that's good. And of course, yeah. a lot of other people that won. Yes. Right? So Parasite. Yeah. They were nominated for six awards. Uh, they won four, including Best Picture. Uh, they were nominated for Best International yeah. Film, and I'm pretty sure that it's the first time a South Korean film has either been nominated and won, or yeah. just has just been nominated yeah. in general. Um, so that's super exciting. And then they won Best Picture on top oh, of that. It. He got Best Director. Yeah. Um, and he thanked his idols, yeah. Martin Scorsese and uh, Quentin Tarantino. That was that speech was probably one of the most emotional ones, yeah. which I really loved. A lot but of good people, a lot of yeah. good stuff. We can continue talking about this for the next half an yes. hour. I'm sure there's so much to talk about. But we'll jump into pets right now. Thanks for sending your pet pics for a chance to win a gift card from the Pet Pad. We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad. In the studio today, joining me is the Eric Bay. And we're here to talk a little bit about uh, some of the pro sports going on throughout the world and kicking it off with a couple of stellar Canadians, starting with Nick Taylor. Nick Taylor won his second PGA uh, Tour championship here and uh, won it at Pebble Beach, going wire to wire. First Canadian ever to do this. And, uh, you know, from Thursday to Sunday, leading the entire way, shot a two under on Sunday to get that minus 19, winning over some pretty amazing golfers, including lefty himself, Phil Mickelson and uh, you know Phil Mickelson actually has won at Pebble Beach more times than Nick Taylor has top five finishes in the last three years so that's really saying something you know he's really stepping it up there and he will be joining a couple other Canadians at the Masters there will be three others to make four and that's actually tied for the most Canadians ever to play at the Masters Eric. No, great to see for sure. We're kind of starting to see that now with those Canadians starting to succeed in some of those sports where you don't traditionally see Canadians, you know, Bianca Andreescu in tennis. And obviously we've had some more success from Canadians in recent years. And I think you can kind of tie that back to Mike Weir when he won the Masters. Seems like a long time ago now, but you're just starting to see those guys start to turn pro. And now it's great to see Canadians having more success and especially overcoming some struggles like uh, he did there on that last day at the tournament. Yeah, and Mike Weir, as you mentioned, he'll be one of the uh, other three Canadians who is eligible and invited to play at the Masters this year, so that should be exciting. Uh, keeping with the Canadian topics, uh, we got some, some women's soccer where there were a couple absolute standout Canadians there. Yeah, for sure, and I mean, obviously, it's great to see them qualify for the Olympics. They were in tough, obviously, against the States, haven't beat them since 2001. But, I mean, they have a ton of young players coming up. I mean, Christine Sinclair has been there, it seems like, forever, obviously. She's been still killing it, obviously, uh, breaking the record for most goals scored internationally. But, again, you're starting to see, like I said, with Weir, those people coming up, watching her grow up, and now, obviously, Jordan Heidema. She uh, won the uh, golden boot there for most goals with seven. Kadisha Buchanan's been coming up as well, just 24. So, a great nucleus to kind of build around and maybe hopefully challenge the states here coming into these Olympics. For sure, and another team that is Canadian who's looking to challenge the U.S. at these Olympics and who actually just had a battle for themselves is the Canadian women's basketball team. So the uh, women are really, really picking it up here for Canadian international sports as they beat Sweden uh, in the finals by a whopping 
30 points. The score was 80 to 50 with, uh, you know, everybody coming off the bench with a lot of group scoring there between, you know, Kia Nurse getting uh, 10 points of her own and uh, a couple others just really standing out and pushing them towards the Olympics. Now, Eric, Canadian basketball this whole year between the Raptors and Kawhi Leonard winning and now, uh, you know, with the women qualifying and absolutely dominate, dominating, rather, Sweden, how has this sort of just improved Canadian basketball as a whole? Oh, it's going to be amazing. Obviously, with Steve Nash making the NBA 20 years ago or so, you see those guys coming in now, watching him, idolizing him. And this is going to take it to a completely another level here. We're going to see probably 15, 20 years. All these people growing up, we saw how the country came together during the Raptors championship run. They're on a 14-game win streak right now, so they're still doing well, and we're going to see that. You have the women's team they can look up to, all the great Canadian basketball players in the NBA right now. So it's going to be amazing to see what all this does here. And again, those 15, 20 years, it's going to be exciting, not only basketball, soccer, golf, whatever it may be. Now, as we're on the topic of Olympics, the NHL, NHL, PA and Olympic Committee have been in talks about NHL players possibly getting back into the Olympics. What's your take on this, Ibe? I mean, I've always wanted to see the NHL players in the Olympics. That's what we kind of grew up on. It was tough to see them out last year, and I really think this is smart for the NHL. They've obviously wanted to expand into that Chinese market, get some people over there in the East enjoying hockey, obviously a billion people, lots of fans there, and what better way to kind of showcase that, show it off, than have the best of the best playing together in an exciting tournament. Well, that's my thought. You know, we, we always, uh, you always see the best of the best in every other sport. So why can't the NHL join in on that? And like you said, try and make some, some green off of that, get some money and expand the game in, in general as a whole there, eBay. All about that green, all about that green. Yeah, well, I guess we'll see. And I mean, I'm personally very excited for these Olympics and you know, well, I guess only time will tell how Canada will do at these. Once again with Eric Bay, continuing our talk with the sports uh, sports world, I guess, uh, and keeping with the professionals. Uh, in the MLB, there's been quite a stir throughout this whole offseason, but especially as of late, Mookie Betts, one of the best baseball players out there right now, being dished from the East Coast all the way out West. Yeah, that's right. He's making the big move out West. Him and David Price are now joining the LA Dodgers. That trade was finally finalized after we thought it was done there last week. There were some issues, so now obviously those two going out West and coming back to the Red Sox, they do get Alex Verdugo. Uh, Kind of a utility guy in the outfield there, still young, 23 and a couple of prospects. But this is really tough here for the Red Sox. Obviously, you're using, losing excuse me, a guy who comes just one year removed from that MVP season. David Price, a solid number three, especially at this stage of his career. So again, tough for the Red Sox that they are trying to downsize that cap while kind of remain competitive. And it's just been gutting to their roster here. Now, David Price, he's a guy who's seen, you know, maybe not the entire playoff success, but he's had quite a bit of wins and had a good ERA during that time. What does that mean for the Dodgers who have, you know, they can't quite get there every single year? Well, what it means is no more excuses. I mean, you look at their lineup, they still have that murderer's row even before bets. Now with bets, he hit 346 when he was uh, MVP. And now you got that top three with uh, Clayton Kershaw, Walker Bueller, David Price fits in there nicely. They still have Alex Wood as the four guy. So, I mean, you look at this lineup and who can compete with them in the NL and even on the AL side? I mean, you have the Yankees, obviously. They loaded up on the offensive side. Garrett Cole this offseason. The Astros, I mean, still scandal, but they still have a solid nucleus there. So it's really it's time to make the rubber hit the road here and see if they can get over that hump and not turn into the Nationals of the past. Now, uh, on the Red Sox side, how does this affect them? Obviously, they're getting a young utility player, like you said, but they're losing two big holes in their lineup. So this could go, I think, one of two ways. Either it just continues the people heading out the door in Boston. Obviously, J.D. Martinez, their hard-hitting D.H. there, he's 
assign his option here for this season. So it could depend here what he wants to do. And obviously they have some big contracts coming up. They did just sign Andrew Benintendi back for two years, 10 mil. So it really depends if people either want to leave or if they can take this. They have that cap room now. Obviously David Price is making a ton of money. And do they use that now to sign their young guys? Raphael Devers will be coming up here. And can they re-sign guys and now build up and become competitive here in two, three seasons? Now, as you mentioned, cap room, we're going to shift it over into the NHL where the trade line trade deadline rather is fastly uh, approaching and there's already been one move by the Toronto Maple Leafs with the LA Kings adding some depth there what are your first thoughts on that trade I mean I think it's a good trade for Toronto obviously with Anderson being hurt at that time you don't know how long he's going to be out and Michael Hutchinson obviously had not been doing it. He'd been struggling. So Jack Campbell, he was a solid option there last year for the Kings, and he's still done fairly well. So I think this just kind of solidifies that back end and gets them a little bit maybe to still make the playoffs. And, you know, there's a couple other teams obviously still in the hunt who might want that little extra kick. Uh, let's kick it off, I guess, with uh, the Calgary Flames and the Edmonton Oilers being the two Alberta teams. These two teams, you know, obviously in the playoff hunt, but what do you think that each of them needs, I guess, to get over that hump and go a little further? I mean, yeah, you say they're right in the thick of it. That Pacific Division is kind of a mess right now. Pretty low point totals for each team. I think for the Flames, they need somebody to kind of solidify that back end. Maybe a Brendan Dillon type, a more defensive defenseman. And then obviously they've struggled. They've been spotty scoring kind of all season. Players aren't having their best years, so I'd say maybe a Mike Hoffman. He might be a little too expensive. I know they've been talking about Tyler Toffoli, so somebody like that on the wing who can help out. Then, like I say, for the Oilers, obviously defense has always been kind of an issue. Defense it is they still need. Maybe, like I say, a Brendan Dillon type, a Joel Edmondson maybe, a little cheaper. Somebody who can solidify that bottom six and help out there for the stretch run. Yeah, I agree completely with you on the defenseman aspect for both teams. And you mentioned Brendan Dillon. He's a great shutdown guy, and I think he would fit nicely into that Flames lineup. If you look at their lineup, they don't have that many shutdown D-men. They got Gio who can kind of do it all, but... You know, between Hannafin, TJ Brody, there's a lot of offensive guys. I don't like Dylan as much as a, as an Oilers possibility uh, for the fact that, you know, they have a lot of middle pairing type of guys. I think they could go after a guy like Alec Martinez possibly. Maybe even Matt Dumba, being an Alberta boy, might want to, you know, bring him in. And although he's having a down season, he's still got a couple years on his contract and we know he can produce. So... That's something that I like to see the Oilers, but you're right, you know, defense wins championships. That's what you always say. So, I mean, those are two things that, uh, you know, each team really has to take care of heading down the line here. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloyd Minster. Getting back to the Oscars today, we were talking about the Oscars and how amazing it was. And yeah. some parts of it were a bit weird in terms yes. of the speeches were kind of long and all over the map. No, I don't think all of them yeah, were super long. Them, yeah. A lot of them are very simple yeah. um, and very great, except for Best Actor and Best Actress, uh, Joaquin Phoenix and Renee Zellweger. Yeah. Uh, their speeches were very all over the place mm -hmm. and in true Joaquin Phoenix uh, he did at the past couple of award shows yeah law very long politically driven speech um, Renee Zellweger she started saying something and then she started going all over the place. I think she place. tried to say too many things yes. all at once and got lost. It was just very choppy and it wasn't it wasn't it very, didn't work out. No. <laughs> yeah overall though it was a pretty good show to watch yes, and I like watching the red carpet and all that good oh, stuff yes. and that is it for our show. Thanks for watching everybody we'll see you again tomorrow.